don't come off joint. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm Grant Gillespie. I'm the police uh, and fire chief for the city of Waverly. It's uh, Grant, G-R-A-N-T, Gillespie, G-I-L-L-E-S-P-I-E. -E. Um, thank y'all for coming out. Uh, I just want to say, you know, we've experienced a devastating loss of life uh, over the last uh, couple of days. Uh, we've lost more people in this event than we did in the train explosion in 1978. Um, but we've seen the community come together. Uh, we've had a lot of assistance from other uh, law enforcement, fire, rescue agencies uh, that have come in and, and really helped us uh, mitigate this incident. Uh, so very uh, appreciative of our partners in, in the uh, various agencies around us uh, and I, I think I guess you guys want to say anything yeah. 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 You didn't uh, go for okay um, I guess as far as uh, moving into the next few days um, we do have a curfew in place in the city of Waverly at 8 p.m. Uh, we are having problems with uh, a small amount of looting and trespassing uh, we, we will close the city down the streets down around eight o'clock tonight. Uh, there was some uh, uh, looting that occurred earlier today, and some uh, some suspects were apprehended in that. Uh, we may have a little bit of information later on that. It just occurred, uh, so we want to keep that cut down. We would ask that people stay in, not come around just to watch. It's hampering our efforts to get people moved around town to respond to different areas. Uh, today we've had search teams from all over the mid-state uh, here helping us locate victims. Uh, we are currently at 21 uh, confirmed deaths uh, here in, in uh, Humphreys County. 20 of those were in the city, uh, one out in the rural area. Uh, those searches will continue tonight until dark and will pick back up in the morning. Uh, we had a list of about 45, give or take, names of missing people. Uh, we published that list today to social media, and we've trimmed that down to right around 20, with most of those just being people that have lost contact with each other. We've been able to reunite them uh, with family, and that's still ongoing. That was dropping even as I left to come over and talk to you. So we're hopeful that we're getting toward the end of that list. Uh, but we do have uh, continuing search efforts that will go into tomorrow uh, as we get into the creeks in a little more detail. Right. And tonight, what our plans are um, going, uh, we're going to be leaving this meeting. We're going to go in. We try to have our nightly uh, planning sessions. For our next days we're trying to get to we're trying to get 48 72 hours into this thing one of the things that i may have talked to you guys um, about individually is we've had a uh, uh, sort of kind of a sensory overload a little bit of assets and stuff that's coming in we're, we're asking some of our people some of our assets to be patient with us to slow down uh, and was formulating our plans. We're evaluating constantly every hour, every couple of hours of how we're going to operate and how we're gonna, what we're going to do and what we're going assets we're going to use where and when. But uh, as y'all seen from the damage uh, from Governor being here today, we've got some very, very, very bad damage in our city, in our county. And it's going to take us a while. Uh, we've got to rebuild some infrastructures. Uh, we've got those kind of plans that's being made, and we've got to we're, we've got a good solid effort working together, a good team effort. And, and like I say, right now with our some of these assets that's coming in from the outside, we couldn't be where we're at right now if it wasn't for them. So, um, thank you very much um, for y'all helping us with with that. You, the media, helping us with that and doing those kind of things. Uh, I would like to ask you to all, please, uh, if you are out taking your pictures and stuff, if we have a, a recovery or some of our families or some of our victims, please to be mindful of them. 
uh, I, I spoke with some of them today on Main Street. They was pretty upset about some things, and they was just they felt like they was really, really being advertised and taken care of. So I ask you to please be mindful of our victims and, and of our people. Um, anybody have any questions? Anything that we can do? That's real. That's one of the things that we are we're doing is we're we're starting to formulate formulate those plans and doing that. We've had deputies out in zones and doing things. And unless we just start going door to door, we've got to, now that some of our power and stuff's coming back on, we've got to start getting that kind of information. Matter of fact, that's the kind of information uh, that we just, we want to send out to dispatch still, right? And if we've got a, a welfare check that we're doing, or there's somebody from out of town and we need a welfare check, please call us, give us that address. We've got the manpower, we're going to do that. We're not going to stop going and checking on our people. We're not going, we're not doing that. If, if, if we, if somebody has a concern, get us that information, get us the address, and we're going to take care of it. With the boil water order, can you just talk about the plans to address the water issue? Plans about the water issue? Okay. Uh, water supply is improving. Uh, we've got water to the hospital now, I've got water to one of our nursing homes. The boil, the boil order is still in effect, and it will be for the next several, several days. Uh, we expect the water situation to improve a lot during the night tonight, and then uh, we're having just identify areas where we're having uh, where we're having some service disruptions on, on a case by case basis. But but uh, our uh, our community's been without water since yesterday morning about seven o'clock, longest outage we've ever had on our system. Uh, but uh, I think relief is coming coming pretty soon on that. Right. I brought everyone out of a white vehicle, sheriff's officers. Right. Um, was that a looting situation? Can you talk about why those folks were arrested? It, it's still kind of ongoing, but my understanding was it, it, it was initially reported as an armed robbery to us. It was not that. It turned out it was just someone stealing merchandise from a convenience store, running out the door with it. These deputies and officers intercepted on that, and uh, they're going to be charged. I just don't have all the details yet. <laughs> Cigarettes, that sort of thing. Right. So <laughs> we kind of felt like we'd gone back in time for a while because we were without our cell phones, uh, unless you were connected in Wi-Fi or whatever. Uh, so it was a little bit like old school. Uh, so folks were just having trouble getting a hold of their loved ones, uh, and then with a. Uh, 911 system being down and uh, just a lot of the things that we experienced because of the flooding, it just made it harder. And I, so I think it kept people out of touch, got them more worried. Um, and fortunately, most of those have been accounted for. And, and I think a lot more will be accounted for as the evening goes on. Uh, that We shifted that priority today to let's get the word out on who is actually missing because we think we could clear a lot of them off the list and we have done that. So, I, my feeling is that it won't go up anymore, uh, but we may get to the list and still have a few that are unaccounted for in the coming days. Uh, we'll just have to see. Uh, potentially, but not significantly. There may be a few more, but I don't think we're going to see double the number or anything like that. So. Uh, we have some some carriers that have been restored. Uh, the carriers have brought in their mobile uh, units to help us here at the command post, so we were able to get service a little bit earlier at the command post. Um, but I think at least Verizon's restored and maybe AT&T, T-Mobile. I begin. It, I think they're beginning to come back online. And it's just been the Waverly area. Some of the rural areas still have their coverage. I apologize if you said this already, but is 911 fixed? Uh, yes, 911 is back online. Uh, I think they, they're, uh, I think they're 100% online. And you mentioned that you're going to be 
mentioned kind of an overflow of assets. I know that a lot of times people are coming here to kind of see the devastation. What's your message to folks who want to help or may want to just come, take a look? What do you want? So in the next few days, we'll have some uh, information out about if you want to come and assist, how to go about doing that. So we'll, we'll get that out on our social media and out in releases to y'all. Uh, but we'll have numbers and locations that you can come to and say, hey, I want to help with the cleanup, uh, I want to provide meals, those kind of things, uh, and that'll be available soon. Uh, we, we've had an abundance, we really have, of, of folks turning out. And honestly, um, in the early hours of this, had it not been for people coming out and making rescues on their own, our loss of life probably would have been much higher. So. Uh, it's been a great help just the way folks have come together to help rescue folks because it was very overwhelming in the first hours. What message do you have for the community tonight to those who have lost loved ones, those who are still missing loved ones, and you guys have been working this way past hours and services Yeah, pray for them. Pray for the families. Uh, everybody involved. Pray. What's your biggest need? Uh, I, I wouldn't even want to begin to, uh, millions of dollars, I, I guess, would be an accurate play. Uh, we've got damage to infrastructure, to residences, to schools, to, you know, a lot of facilities here in town. It's going to be significant. So. Uh, yes, I think just uh, assistance from uh, federal resources uh, because that's going to open up uh, assistance to our residents here uh, more importantly than anything, but assistance from the federal government to open this up as a disaster would be tremendous. Uh, it would just allow, and that might be more for you, but it, it would allow us to recoup some expenses that were lost, and uh, both by not just by government, but by individuals uh, here in the community. If you if you don't mind touching touching on a need, you said one one of the things that we need right now, patience, patience, and patience. We we've got we're in this for the long haul. We're, we're going to, I mean, we're looking two weeks to 30 days. And when I say the patience, we've got to with the, the formulate the plans and executing it and stay on track. And we don't need to get overwhelmed with that. And, you know, and that's like when I said something earlier about just asking you guys to push out some information. If you're sightseeing, please don't come in Waverly. It's, it's clogging us up. It's jamming us up. We've got, we've got people here that's helping. We've got people, the emergency traffic coming and going. Uh, I just need patience. We need patience in the prayers and like that. And to, that's to answer that question. And I think that would be probably one of the very best things that we could ask for right now. Sure do. Uh, faster, probably more devastating than I could. I think that we could agree with that. that more devastating than, than that one. I think we had 13 inches. Don't excuse my numbers. I don't want to quote the numbers. But I think my understanding is that we got a significant more rain this time in a shorter time period and and that's very significant in, in this situation very very fast coming up and i mean that's why it, it put, like the chief was saying it put us on a uh, it put waverly on an island for a little while we couldn't you know it took me five hours to get here from McEwen. you know and that's 10 miles eight ten miles down the road and it just we like i said if, if it hadn't have been for if it hadn't have been for the people and coming out and doing what we did we'd probably been a lot worse shape well, the devastation has definitely got more victims. I mean, I don't think we have more victims. I mean, we have exactly in that, Mayor. Do you remember? 18. 18. So we have more victims. So we have more victims now than what we did in the explosion. Um, I was a child, 10 years old, when that happened. Um, the thing about that damage, if the Mayor, help me out, please, that that, that was almost in, in this one small lure area, whereas this is the length of the city limits almost in the devastation. And uh, you know, her question was, yes, what's, what's the difference in this in 2010 flood? Yes, sir. No loss of life. There's no loss yeah, of life great in point. 2010, and today we know there's been 22 lives yeah. lost. So that was, that was a major difference in those two events. Loss of life. Yeah.
Excuse me. The worst thing you've ever seen happen to your team? I've been around a long time and I've uh, been through been through a lot of events here and this one uh, really took me back yesterday. It, it really did. It, 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 this is bad. This is bad. Got a number of people that's affected, a number of lives that's lost, uh, the property that's been lost, uh, residential housing that's in short supply to begin with. Uh, we've got some people that's going to be hurting for a long time to come. You know, yesterday, Waverly dropped off the map when you're banging spaghetti for hours. I don't want to sound. What do you feel like in that moment of spaghetti to help? From the outside trying to get in, we <laughs> I didn't like it at all. Uh, you know, when, when, when you have uh, law enforcement, EMS, and other people calling, needing you, and not being able to get to them, it's, it's, it's almost like a mom not trying to being able to get to her kid, you know, and it's, I don't, it's, 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 a, it's a very sinking feeling, very sinking feeling. And uh, knowing that you, knowing that you have people that's needing it, uh, that can't get help, when, you, when I'm sitting here getting videos today from some of you guys that, uh, that I have people floating down the creek that nobody can able to get to and nobody can help, it's, uh, it hurts. It hurts. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Appreciate it. If I can give you guys just a few words about the things that we do have in place for people who would like to help. Um, the National Guard Armory is set up starting tomorrow from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. They're accepting non-perishable food, water, and cleaning supplies. Cleaning supplies is going to be huge over the next weeks, month for these residents to try and clean up their homes um, that they can. Um, monetary donations, we've also been asked about that. There are two places set up. You can, if you're local, you can go to the First Federal Bank and it's the Humphreys Homeless Coalition. Donations can be made there online.